Her phone rings. From the comfort of her bed, Sophie tries to make out the name on the screen. It's probably Jenna calling with plans for tonight. Not important. Five minutes pass, and the phone rings again. Fine. She gives in and attempts to get out of her cocoon as she reaches over and tries to answer with a super cheerful voice. Hi, Jenna. Oh, no, sorry, I have plans. That's not true, I don't always make excuses. Sure it still counts, it wasn't that long ago. Wait, whose birthday? Yes, yes, I remember. All right, all right, I'll think about it and I'll call you back. Now, what page was I on? Ah, yes, here. And she gets lost in another world for a little while. Well, actually a long while. She only realizes how late it is when she looks up and sees that the sun has set. This is when she notices Jenna sent a message a few hours ago. Not this time, Sophie. Picking you up at eight. Oh no, I forgot to call her back, again. Too late. Someone's at the door. No, it must be Jenna. It's eight now? Sophie is standing in her pajamas in the middle of the living room when Jenna lets herself in. She has her no excuses face on, takes one look at her and goes straight to her bedroom to pick out an outfit. In no time, Sophie finds herself in Jenna's car, holding flowers that are apparently perfect for her their friend's birthday. As she sits in silence, saving her energy for what's to come, she really, really hopes that it won't end too late and that she will still get time for a couple of Netflix episodes. They arrive at the club and Jenna immediately disappears into the crowd. Great, Sophie thinks. Why is the music so loud? And why are people looking at me? Oh, the stupid flowers. Ugh, they're drawing so much attention. She quickly looks around to find a good spot for them. There, on the corner of the bench where no one is sitting. Done. Now someone is coming straight for her. She knows her. Maybe. Susie? No, Sarah. Wait, birthday Sarah? Or the other Sarah? She cringes at the idea that she might get a hug. In three, two, one. Sarah, hi, happy birthday. Of course I'm here, wouldn't miss your birthday. Sure, I'll come say hello to your friends in a bit. And that's two crises aborted already. Wow, she's feeling pretty good about herself. Maybe she will go say hi to those people she thinks she met at that thing six months ago. Why, hello there, Catherine. Long time no see. I've been great, thanks, working on that book still. Congratulations on graduating. Yes, I sound pretty cool. Let's do it. Let's go right over to Catherine like a big girl and do that thing. What's it called? Socializing? Wait, other people are now talking to Catherine. I guess she's kind of busy. Not going in there now. Oh well, I need to pee anyway. She starts maneuvering her way around the club, looking for Jenna so she can ask her where the restroom is. But she is nowhere to be found. To avoid standing in the middle of the room alone, Sophie casually stops next to a group of people and finds interest in what they're saying, smiling. A couple people bump into her and she tries to smoothly walk out of the way, but realizes the bumping continues. She turns around and sees a grinning face inches from hers. He's trying to dance with her. His moves were awful, and he wasn't even smooth. Please, no, ew, no dancing. She smiles back apologetically and quickly walks away, pushing through the people. Restroom, now, more than ever. Sophie looks around, looking for the restroom. Found it! She quickly walks in and locks the door, and finally takes a breath. Ugh, this is exhausting. Conveniently, there is no one else around, so she takes her time and checks the messages on her phone. Somehow, she ends up in a loop of funny cat videos. 
After 15 minutes of cat videos, she decides it's time to find Jenna. And success. She sees her at the bar talking to Catherine. Hey, Jenna, it's getting pretty late, so I think I'm going to head home now. What? We just got here. It has literally been 30 minutes, said Jenna. Yeah, you know, I, I had that thing early in the morning. Jenna and Catherine stare at her, not believing her obvious excuses. Uh... Hmm... Nope, not worth it. Sophie then hides her phone under her pillow. Let's not ruin this perfect day. She smiles at the rain outside and returns to her book.